Good morning, everyone. Paula Madison, Sierra, Power Marketing, SF. So how to be an effective business owner. Yeah, listen, yes, yes, yes. I know there's no formula. There is no secret sauce. But you know, there are certain definite steps and things and actions that we know that successful business owners, um, successful uh, icons, um, all seem to follow. We're going to have a discussion today. Um, Robert Schuffner, uh, director of the MBA program and lecturer um, at the Edward um, uh, uh, Agino School of Business at the Golden Gate University is going to discuss with us today. So, you know, something, let's just jump right into it. Let's go. Good morning, everyone. So, um, you know, I, with all the topics that I've been doing lately, I thought that this was an important one because it ties up so much of what we do. And also, you know, I really just wanted to just go meet some really great people outside of my network. So this morning, Robert Schaffner, director of the MBA programs, lecturer at the Edward S. Agino School of Business at Golden Gate University, is going to share with us this morning. So excited to have him on the show. Good morning, Robert. How are you? Good morning, Paula. Good to see your smiling face. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for being here. Right. So Robert and I have known each other for a minute. You know, um, actually, it's been a while well, at least uh, probably 10 years yeah 10 years <laughs> time goes so fast no right. <laughs> we used to work at the sbdc together for san mateo robert was my boss um and so it's you know we were helping to up level uh, small business owners who came to the county for um assistance and needed coaching and so robert was my uh, my direct uh, report um, so uh, thanks for being on the show to share. And now you're with um, uh, the Golden Gate University, right? Yes, yes. Well, tell me about this pathway. How did you get into this adult um, uh, learning um, uh, area? Um, is this something that you were always in? Well, really, really quick. So I started off in financial services and, oh, okay. and had a career in banking, did things as an executive for Citibank here in California, internationally, as well as back East. And then I had a, someone that said, I think you'd be a good teacher. That's actually what I had, was thought I was going to do when I was an undergraduate. Mm -hmm. uh, decided not to do that. Got into what I did for a, a long career. And then I got into higher education, um, small business development center, now at Golden Gate. What I bring is all my knowledge about business. So I'm running an MBA program, got to know about business and how business operates, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm able to bring the practical along with the theory and all that educational theory to help people be effective in applying the knowledge back in their workplace. So real, real quick. Yeah, no, I I I, I love the uh, the synopsis, the cliff notes is what we used to call it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, I don't even know if those are around anymore. I might have just dated myself. You They're know? online, electronic. <laughs> are they? Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean to you to be an entrepreneur, especially in this time of change? Uh, to me, an entrepreneur is someone that um, wants to create something uh is innovative um not afraid to take a risk uh we can talk a little bit more about that uh but they 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 see a problem they're going to find a solution to it sometimes they only have all the information they're going to go from that problem to the solution and they're willing to move fairly quickly uh this is not working in a mainstream business where things take a long time to do sometimes. Um, and they're, uh, they're not afraid to tell Paula or someone else, I think you're wrong. Yeah. And uh, here's what I think we should do. So that's, you know, if you look at, you look at Steve Jobs, you look at some of the, the great entrepreneur names that are out there. Um, they had that sort of a mindset of 
I see a problem, I'm going to figure out a way to change that, provide a solution and get it out to the market sooner than later. Yeah, absolutely. And what do you think business owners should understand as they're approaching this, as they're thinking about this, um, as they're jumping in to create a plan? And sometimes, I mean, you've seen it, not create a plan. We're just off to the races, right? Mm -hmm. But what are some of the things that you think that they should understand as they go into this? The first thing I would tell anyone is recognize this will be one of the hardest things you do. So if you are absolutely not sure you want to devote the time to this, then really give it some thought. Your own personal time. And then you need to think about your ecosystem or your, your relationships around you, your spouse, your friends, et cetera, because there's going to come a time when they want to do something. Why don't we go do this? And you're saying, oh, you know, I got to do some work on the business. I've got to do that. It's, it's time consuming. So the first thing that I want people to understand is you're going to make a big time commitment. Be prepared for that. If you're not yeah. quite sure, check yourself. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I feel like people don't really look at as well is what are their strengths and weaknesses going in? I think because we're in such a technological world, especially here in California, everyone just thinks that the computer is going to solve everything for mm -hmm. them um, and not understanding that they also need human intervention mixed into that as well. So like, what are your strengths and your weaknesses going in and how can you fill those holes with? Like, Absolutely. You, know, you have whatever. to build. We'll, we'll, we, you talk about this ecosystem. And so the ecosystem might be a small business development center. It might be an accelerator. It might be an incubator. It might be whoever. Yeah. But yeah. don't be afraid to spend the dollars on getting the knowledge that you need. So yeah. talk about there was a guy that I was teaching and he had intellectual property something and he had got something off the web and went and structured his business this way. Ooh. And then at the back end, someone all of a sudden came at him and sued about mm. his business. Now he had been penny, uh, penny wise, pound foolish because he didn't want to make the investment. He didn't want to retain an attorney. And when he finally did get an attorney involved, the attorney said, oh, geez, I just wish you had come to me because I would have told you to do this. And, and it's you like too facing late. this. Oh, and at man. that point, it was too late. He lost his business. Yeah. And, you know, the, the funny part is I even see it on the marketing end as well. I had a client who full on, uh, they had another marketing company. They lost their URL that they had had for 25 years. Imagine the equity on that. Mm -hmm. They've gotten so much business because Google saw them as having that brand equity, right? They lost it. It was in the open. Someone jumped right on it and literally started representing themselves as them. They would, when they picked up the phone, they would use their name, like, good morning, that's who we are. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, like, let's get an attorney on this. And he's like, well, it's been like five years. I'm like, five years and you <laughs> haven't done anything. And of course, when I reached out to my community, a lot of them, were, yeah, there's things you're gonna can do, but it's gonna be more expensive. Um, but yeah, I wish they had come to me earlier. There's so much that we could have done immediately right off the bat. So and you out there in LinkedIn land, what we're saying is, yes, if I was an attorney right now, all of a sudden my clock's going $50 an hour, hundred dollars an hour. And you're thinking about that cost, but there's a lot of resources in the market. There's that are the SBDC. You can go there and get legal education. You can go to a lot of places and get legal education. What that means is they're not going to give you advice, but they're going to give you enough education so that when you do plug in with someone, let's say Paul is the attorney, I've got one, two, three questions I want to ask. Yeah. I got those questions answered in 30 minutes versus I'm not quite sure what I want to ask. And now it's two hours later and now my it's gone up to this and whatever. So get your education first, then you know what to ask and you can use your, your, your dollars wisely.
I mean, to me, the coolest thing is a business owner comes in to sit with me for even marketing who's prepared, you know, because you clearly know your business and what you're working with. Um, and you have, you don't have to be a marketing expert. I, I love that book, Think and Grow Rich, that chapter on getting specialized assistance. You know, um, you should know enough to lead your team, but you don't have to know it deeply. Um, I, I think, uh, what was it, Henry Ford, who sued um, a Chicago paper because they said that he was stupid. And his whole point that won the case was, um, why should I know every single detail? Um, I'm the business owner. I should know enough to pick up a phone and get specialized help to move me forward, right? right, right. So it's, uh, you know, and I feel like I see it, uh, especially with my founders. They're touching so much that they forget. I think this leads us to my next question to you perfectly. I want to get your opinion on this. Working on, not in your business, what does that mean to you? Working on your business, you are, you're always thinking about how am I going to make my business better? How am I going to move my business to the next level? What are strategic things I need to be thinking about? You're thinking a little bit, a little bit higher level, you're not necessarily at 30,000 feet, but you're, you know, you're probably at least at five or 10. So you're thinking about what are the things I need to do with the business? Working in the business is that all of a sudden you've gotten involved and uh, you're trying to make all the decisions about what to post on social media, what to, what to do with your, uh, something about your accounting system. Do I use Intuit? Do I use something else? You're, you're, you're all down here in these details, which are important, but you got to figure out how you're going to get that done because is that helping ultimately move your business forward? and make your business successful. So it's it's being able to step back a little bit and think strategically as an owner yeah. about your business. And I mean, I think of course, initially when you start too, right? I mean, th you're touching, I mean, cause you're, especially for those guys who are thinking about starting, you know, sometimes the funding isn't always there. And even if you have the funding, I think sometimes you should touch a little bit initially because you you need to know I mean, I remember when I went back to design school, um, I, my major was pro product development. So I thought I'm going to be the boss. So I stroll in in my cute outfit first day. They handed me boxes like fabrics and this. I'm like, I'm not a design major. And they're like, yeah, but you're going to be leading the design team. You need to know what they know. You don't need, need to know it deeply, but you need to be able to touch it a bit mm -hmm. to be able to do it. So when you're starting off, Yes, there's some things that you're going, the hours are going to be longer. You're building this new business, but this is not a forever thing. Um, in order to multiply yourself, you need to move forward. So yeah, you're going to touch some things. Realistically, you're going to touch some You're going to touch everything, you know? at I mean? least initially, but you don't want to do that long, long term. Yeah. And you don't also want to do that for everything. Like I love your example earlier about the gentleman who uh, did the trademark. IP protection, mm -hmm. just, I'll do it myself. I found something online. There are certain things to me that are too deep and too risky for you to just use a template. Yeah. You know, um, it's like, don't be so busy picking up pennies in front of you while dollar bills are falling out your back pocket. Yeah. You know, um, there's certain, like to me, uh, accounting, legal work, mm -hmm. just sit down with someone yes it's going to be even at the lower it's going to be costly um but it's going to be a lot more savings than the alternative which is going to be expensive you yeah. know so um so yeah yeah a little bit touching upon that that i would tell anyone is a lot of times when we start to build a business plan everyone thinks about well i got to put the marketing information there i've got to do something on the finances etc the most important thing you start with is people. Mm, oh, is yourself that. and who's your team going to be? Oh. Now, this was down in Silicon Valley and talked to a very successful venture capitalist. He's got a fund. He's got at least one unicorn in his fund, um, et cetera, et cetera. And he's been doing this for years. 
he says the very first thing we ask before anything else is the people. Ooh. Wow. And he says, at least for for what he does, they never invest in a single person business. They always want two people. <laughs> so they want this team. So I, I just say that begin there. And I'm going to fold that into, as you talk about people, you want to get like-minded people. So one of the words I'll use today is mindset. What's your mindset about the business? How passionate are you? Uh, what's really of value to you, et cetera. Now, if you've gotten, oh, this person's really great. They've got skill I need, et cetera. They don't have your same passion. They don't have your same mindset. What are you going to spend your time doing? Mm -hmm. no, it's you're trying, trying to bring them along. Trying to are you talking to me right now, Robert? <laughs> are you looking into my past? What's happening? <laughs> but you'll spend all your time. You know, so you're going to say, geez, I didn't get much done on the business this week because I was dealing with this. Oh, my God. So, trying to push a boulder up the hill by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, to me, this leads me perfectly into um, entrepreneurs or community builders is, is what I'm hearing because it's, it's not just uh, your employees. I'm hearing vendors, I'm hearing so much else. Um, and in a weird way, I know, you know, from your side, you're speaking operationally because that's the backbone for the business and how all the other pieces flow. But I'm also hearing marketing surprisingly because sometimes people don't understand that the people that you bring into your business that are like-minded with the same mindset mm -hmm. builds your brand because you need yeah. them to have and share your values um yeah i know i'm quoting e-myth revisited again i love michael gerber's book because he makes the statement hire people who are kind because you mm -hmm. can't teach people how to be kind you can't right. teach people how to have values um you can teach them everything else. You can't teach them values, um, you know. Um, and so, if you want to um, know how people are kind, just go out and grab a cup of coffee, or go and have go have something to eat. See how they treat the, the see how they treat the wait staff. Oh God! And I've seen <laughs> that, that too. You, give you some insight. I I know, right? And so you've been at the corporate level. I used to be at big agency side in New York, and I'll tell you, you're sitting in an expensive restaurant, rocking that great suit. And sometimes people just get so high on that public relations um, and how rudely and dismissive they treat the wait staff is just it just makes no sense to me. Yeah. You know, um, you need that elevation. It really makes a big statement, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I know become to me and I, you know, of course, when people are starting, you say this to them, they're like, what? Becoming an op entrepreneur, I think, is easy. I think the day-to-day, -day, effective day-to-day -day management of the business is really the task, yes. you know, really building that beautiful dream. That's the real task, mm -hmm. you know, because right now I could go down, get my license at the county clerk's office, have my name. I could do a, a, a quick Wix website. I could literally, boom, I'm official. I started a business, right? Mm -hmm. Um but it's what you do with that afterwards. So what yeah. habits um, do you think a business owner should have to build a strong um, a, a business and themselves yeah. as well into a, a, a successful business owner? Well, one thing is you're gonna have to be organized. Mm. And so you're gonna have to do some planning. Now, oftentimes we sort of go on week to week, here's my to-do list for the week, week, et cetera, et cetera, or day to day, we even do, break it down to that. I'm going to suggest to you as an entrepreneur that you create a 12 week calendar. Ooh, or yes. one quarter here. And you put down the things that you want to accomplish in that quarter and you prioritize them. And you, you know, you occasionally take a look at that. There's a, is an A now a B and a B or a C has become an A, et cetera, as you're going through. But you're looking, what do I want to have done for my business over these next 12 weeks? And you're laser focused on that. Things will come up during a day or during a week that may get you a little bit off of a weekly schedule, but it shouldn't get you off that 12 week schedule. Yes. So that you can keep focus. Here's where I've got to get to. 
And you and that's something you're checking on all the time. So that's that planning and organizing. You and this laser focus that I'm speaking of, there's so many distractions in the world. There's so many TikToks in the world uh, that oh, <laughs> you're looking over here, you're looking over there. And people know, right? the things, the things, right? the people are coming at you with all sorts of things. So you've got to like You've got to block those out. So I started off and said about mindset. You got, of course, you have to have this mindset. You've got to also have grit. You can't yeah, give up. Right? Yeah. yeah. You. I've got really long arms. I got thirty six, uh, thirty seven inch sleeves. Um, so <laughs> I did not I realize that. <laughs> I can reach behind and pat myself on the back. <laughs> Because I'm the only one that may as an entrepreneur. You're not going to get a lot of pats on the back from other people. So yeah. you've got to develop within yourself. When things look low, geez, that didn't quite work. I'm going to keep on going. Mm. The successful entrepreneurs are the ones that kept on going. When you encounter something, yeah. I don't know what it is, but you've now you've got a business problem. Do um, you throw up your hands or do you have a problem solving focus what am i going to do and then back to what we talked about previously if i don't have the expertise who am i going to involve so that we can move beyond this obstacle yeah. my background's finance if i was trying to do something on marketing i know a bit about marketing but i think i call paula that's her expertise and yeah. she can give me a lot of ideas that I might not have. So mindset, passion, grit, don't give up. Got to have this focus on problem solving. And then the other thing is you have to understand within yourself as an entrepreneur, your risk tolerance. How comfortable are you with taking a risk? Because sometimes you're going to risk everything. Yeah. And you may not know where the next dollar is coming from. But then on the other side of that, you came out the other side just fine and you went ahead. But you know what? If you never take the risk, you're never going to get the reward. Yeah. yeah. And you'll all of a sudden sit back and say, hmm, huh. <laughs> if I had just gone a little bit further. Great salespeople, you know why people are great at sales? because they understand that it takes 10 calls before you get a sale. And guess who's really successful? The person that made the 10th call. You might yeah. have done nine and you quit. That's yeah. great. <laughs> and I come <laughs> along and I made the 10th. Oh, I'm ready to buy. Exactly. With positivity, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 in a broad terms, those are some things I think that are really, really important. Mindset, grit problem solving, risk analysis, understanding what your risk tolerance is, and, and understanding you, in, in, in entrepreneurship, you've got to be prepared to take some risk. I'm, I'm going to throw another one. Can I throw um, community, building yes. a great community, network, whatever gonna, you want to call that. it. Yeah. yeah. You have to, you gather around you, your trusted team of advisors. Uh, sometimes it's going to be someone you pay, but other times it's just people like you can bounce stuff off of. And in entrepreneurship, don't lose sight of an old term or old way we used to do business of bartering, of um, bootstrapping, of things along those lines. I need this. Hey, I could do this for you. Um, and what can you get from someone else? Because entrepreneurs are very giving. Mm. Small business people really, you know, if you wanted to know something about a business you're thinking of going into, you'd be surprised if you go and talk to a business owner and they don't perceive you as a, a direct threat for their business and their community. They'll open up the whole doors and tell you everything. They're, they will give you anything you need to help you be successful. Small business entrepreneurship is effectively 49% of the United States economy. Wow. Think about that, 49%. Mm -hmm. What do we hear about 
we hear about Google, we hear about Tesla, we it's, hear about yeah. GM or et cetera. And they're, and they're needed. We need them. But what have you just seen in the last couple of months? Mm -hmm. Downsize here, downsize there, downsize mm -hmm. here. Guess who is the engine for growth of employees? Small you businesses. You yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. Always has been that way. So incredibly important uh, for our economy because uh, you guys do a great job. You do so many good things. You're helping put food on people's plates. Mm -hmm. You're helping create careers. Uh, you never know who, from what you help do, may become the next great thing. And, you know, I'm going to also, when you said all of that with grit and, you know, that resiliency, I'm also going to say take responsibility and ownership, man. I remember um, meeting another owner and he was like, my team did this and my team did that. And I'm like, Ugh. like, take ownership. It's on you. It's your business. Um, I heard this great phrase the other day that said, uh, do not, um, don't be so busy looking out the window, look in the mirror, you know, um, take responsibility and take ownership um, completely. It's yours, you know, um, because you hire the person who made the mistake. Maybe you haven't followed up and trained them properly. What, or maybe, like you said earlier, maybe you should be letting them go. Right. Right? Um, all of that is, it's on, it's you, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it, that's a big deal, you know? So, you know, you touched upon it and really, really quick. When you, when we talk about people, you do have to know when to maybe let someone go. Yeah. That they're just, it's draining your business. Either they're not doing what you hired them. They're not doing what you hired them to do. Uh, or they're not a fit with the team. And so you're dealing with all those issues. So do do be aware of that. As an entrepreneur, you're the boss. To what Paula said, you take the responsibility uh, when something goes wrong. You can praise your team when something goes right because it was a team effort. Yeah. But a lot of times don't start pointing, well, it was the, the team. Someone else did this wrong and whatever. I always go with the philosophy of try to catch somebody doing something right. Mm. Instead of always blowing them up when yeah. something goes well, wrong. Well, because yeah. I don't think anybody gets up in the morning and says, you know what? I'm getting up this morning. I'm going to try to think all the things I can do wrong at work. <laughs> <laughs> you mean they don't? They just mess up everything. <laughs> yeah. So try to catch someone doing something right. And if someone did something wrong, let them know about it in private. You don't have to do that in front of everybody. Exactly. Don't you have to try and because it does take something from the team, doesn't it? When you do that, yeah. you yeah. know, I, and it sounds like a, a, a very small one, but the human temple is important and we're doing a lot of hours. And I know the big thing you get on YouTube, it's like, you know, do it until you fall down. And maybe there might be one or two nights like that. But to me, if you're doing that all the time, it goes back to what you said earlier about like have a goal. What does your 12 week look like? Don't mm -hmm. sash into your week. What does your quarter look like? Right? right. So I think rest and exercise, eating right and taking care of your mindset. And I know a bunch of you are going to hate it when I say the M word, but meditation or just sitting still for two seconds, just walk away from your desk and just sit and take deep breaths without your phone on or anything like that. You know, I had to learn those things a hard way, man. It's like you push your body, even a car will blow when you mm -hmm. push it like that. Anything in nature will blow when you push it like that. Like rest and make sure that you're taking care of your body temple because it's an important one. Nothing can get done. Now you have like a million, you've made all the, the revenue and your body's falling apart. Your marriage right. sucks, your relationships, you know, it's a, it, so make sure that you're trying to create a full plan that includes your business and your life yeah. as well. Yeah. That M is so important. The mental aspect, really, really important. And there's all sorts of studies out. Just Google. I mean, there's just so many things here recently about the importance of getting your rest, of getting your sleep. Um, you, you may think, oh, I can get by on two hours of sleep a night. You can't. Yeah. Uh, and I hear people self. bragging about it. I just need right. four hours. I'm like, yeah. And the other thing, entrepreneurs, you can't multitask. 
Oh, God, yes. I had to learn that too. Thank you. <laughs> you. So a lot of, I'm going to do all, I'm doing all these things. Really, you're doing them all sort of mediocre. So back to your focus. You got to be focused on something. Get that done within the 12 weeks. Then go to the next thing. Don't try to do four things at the same time. Absolutely. All right. You know, I feel like we could talk for a long time because it is, like I said earlier, there is no absolute formula and there's no secret sauce out there, guys. But we do know that the successful amongst us, the iconic figures that have rose above us, literally all say very openly, there's nothing that special about me. But I know that I do the following and I'm consistent. I'm, I plan, I'm targeted, my mindset. We're hearing all of these things that they're repeatedly saying. So if we know them, why not do them, right? So, um, but, uh, you know, to wrap up the program that you are um, uh, the director of at Golden Gate University, I think is a wonderful seg to what we're doing right now, what we're discussing right now. You want to share really quickly um, a little bit about the program? Yeah, yeah the program is called uh, the Chevron Entrepreneurship Small Business Program. It's uh, offered through Golden Gate University. We have had about 300 graduates through that program over the last uh, eight years. We run two cohorts a year, 12 weeks, completely free. Uh, you're gonna go through things that we talked about today, but you're also gonna get, uh, how, do you manage your, how do you manage your finances? How do you understand fixed costs, variable costs, put together budgets, et cetera, uh, financing options, intellectual property, uh, human resources, we talked a lot about people today, uh, business development, is business development the same as sales? So we bring all those things together in 12 sessions on Saturday mornings from 9 to 12. Um, you wrap up with a, uh, with a pitch uh, on the last day of the class, uh, a business plan is produced, uh, and then we try to match you up with a mentor uh, that'll work with you for a year after the program to, to get your business fully launched. We've had some very successful businesses that have come out of the program. And it's a very, uh, it's a diverse program. So entrepreneurs of all sizes, shapes, gender, et cetera, are involved in the program. The, you, you can that. go to Golden Gate University and just put in entrepreneur center small business, and it will take you to a link for the program. Our next program will run again in the fall uh, since we're right in the middle of the spring program. I love that. I did not know that it was a sponsored event by, by Chevron. That, that's so wonderful. And I, I, you know, in my network now, there are quite a few of your graduates. Um, and I bump, I bump into them so frequently. It always makes me happy to, to, to meet them. Um, and so I will drop that link in um, at the end of the show so that if you guys are interested, if you want to share it with your network, it, it would be great as well. Um, Is there a way to drop that to you, Paula? Um, I, I have can, the link, but I don't know. We can do it do. after the show. Email it to me and I'll All drop right. it in and I'll share it with the entire LinkedIn space. Or you can actually drop it in after the show as well. Right. Um, but yeah, send me the link and I'll do it. I'll get our, our chain starting because that was new information for me, you know? Right. <laughs> so, so guys, we're going to wrap up the show. It, you know, if you want to reach out to Robert, I will send you the link. It will be right below at the end of the show. Um, and if you're interested in marketing or having a talk about marketing, please reach out to me. Um, my continued mission, as always, is, introduce, is to introduce you to what I call everyday experts and local business owners to up-level you and have they, them share their expertise in their area with you. You know, we're a hive mind and we want to take from that entire hive to make ourselves better. Um, and of course, I offer marketing tips as well. We air every Thursday, 10 a.m. live on LinkedIn. And when, if you're watching the show, you just open my page and it will be right in the header area. Um, it's going live there right now. This is live, not a pre-recorded, beautifully edited show. Um, so definitely tune in or catch us on the replay. Uh, thanks, of course, to visit uh, all the viewers for watching and all the guys who will watch us after. Robert, why don't you go ahead and close us up with uh, your favorite quote? Um, 
my favorite quote is this one that I sort of made up for myself. And that is you only get 168 each week. Use them wisely. So 168, yeah. there's 168 hours in the week. You got 56 hours for sleep, 56 hours. You may be working and not quite full time on your, your uh, entrepreneurial endeavor. And so you got 56 hours. Make wise use of that time. I love that. You know, when he shared the quote with me, I'm like, 168 what? <laughs> 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 but that is so true. When you lay out that schedule and you create that schedule, you will see that you only have a certain amount of time, you know? So I hope that, that you guys will find this resource helpful, the information helpful. And, you know, as always, viewers, thank you so much for supporting um, and have an amazing rest of the day. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you for allowing me to share with you. Bye. Definitely.